In my shop this week, it was all about doing a little bit more organizing. I'm sure you know that it's very easy to set a pile on the floor and then just let it continue to live there. So I find that by forcing yourself to look at a pile and think, what do I wanna do with this? Little bit by little bit is just slowly breaking my shop to where things are easier to find and therefore I can move through projects quicker. Let's start this off with a storage solution for extra saw blades and all of the accessories. Between my track saw, circular saw, miter saw, table saw, then of course I also have my dado stack, my insert plates, and all of the interchangeable inserts. These have all just been laying in a pile on the floor next to my table saw. As I often do with shop projects, I looked to my scrap bin and found a nice chunk of cedar that I could use for this rack. I started off by placing measurements along the edge of this block and I just picked a random number of one inch to space my blades apart. Next, I tilted my table saw to a 45 degree angle. And as you can see, I cut in the first 45 degree angle, which will of course hold the first blade. And then I made a mark on my cast iron on where the start of that cut fell. And this allowed me to make quick work of indexing over my board after every time I made a cut to line up for the next one. And like what I do with most storage items, I don't just build for what I currently have, but leave room for extras in case my inventory grows. So I went ahead and made 45 degree cuts at one inches apart from one another down the entire length of this board. Now I can set my blade back to 90 and rip it right down the middle in order to create two holders. This is cedar, so it is a little bit fuzzy. So I went ahead and turned my belt sander up on its back and did a little bit of cleanup work before mounting it to the wall. Now, even though I have plywood walls and I feel pretty confident that these blades will always live here, I went ahead and placed it on a fringe cleat just to give myself the flexibility of easily moving it around in the future. I placed a 45 degree cleat along the top on the back and then attached a regular spacer along the bottom just so the bottom of the holder won't want to kick in at an angle. I used my personal height to figure out where on the wall I wanted it, placed a corresponding French cleat, and then started loading it down with blades. I started off with my larger blades up at the top, which is this 12 inch miter saw blade, then moved down to my circular saw blades and then my track saw blades. Next, I repeated the process and made an identical holder for my dado stack so that I not only have room to place my two blades, but also the three chippers. And you can see I left room at the bottom so that I could put in two screws. And this gave me an area to hang the spacers that come with the dado stack and then the four cards that I personally keep with mine. Typically, whenever I'm using a dado stack, I use whatever's recommended on the cheat sheet plus one card. Right underneath the dado stack, I added in two triangles that, again, I just cut from some scrap wood and put in a few pocket holes. I did angle the back so that these were slightly tilted up in order to hold these insert plates of mine. These go to the new insert plate that I'm using in my saw. Instead of the entire insert being disposable, they made a removable portion on the inside. Anytime I cut into a new insert, I mark on it what blade thickness it was for. And this shelf can not only hold all of the marked ones, but also all of my blank ones. Then for things like my spare brake cartridge and the insert plates that came with my saw, I just threw a screw into the wall and hung them. Okay, next on my list was a battery charging station. Even though the majority of my power tools are Triton, it seems like I have one battery from all of the other manufacturers, and having all of the chargers scattered around is just a little bit of a nuisance. So I first measured out all of my battery chargers to get a needed length and depth, and then grabbed a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood and cut it down over at the miter saw. I cut not only what will be a bottom shelf, but also a back. Before joining things together, I set the chargers in place in the orientation that I wanted them and marked off where the cords would fall and then cut out slits over at my bandsaw so that whenever I place the chargers on the shelf, I can route the cords out to the back to where they won't be in the way. Since this is an indoor project, I'm using Titebond Original Wood Glue and I stuck things in my super jaws just to make joining these two things a little bit easier.
Now I created these wings for the sides to offer support to the bottom shelf. However, I didn't really think it through whenever I was building it because my original plan was to have a shelf along the bottom to store all of the batteries. But of course, no problem. The glue wasn't dry yet, so I was able to unscrew them and knock them off. Then I reused the basic shape, but just extended the bottom in order to incorporate the length of the shelf needed at the bottom. After getting that reattached, I measured in between the two, cut a shelf, and then attached it using glue and screws. After adding two cleats to the back, I can now set it on my wall and start figuring out where I wanted this power strip. To attach it, I'm actually using some high-end Velcro. It might sound funny, but it's crazy how often I've utilized this Velcro in my shop. I definitely recommend getting a roll and just keep it on standby. After getting the power strip attached, I plugged in all of the charger, then just did a little bit of cord management to tidy up those cords. And as you can see, I not only have a home for all of my chargers in one location, but also a spot to place all of my extra batteries. And if you're interested in a diagram on the battery charger or the blade storage, then I do have a free download over on my website, link for you down below. All right, and then the last thing I decided to do was install some ceiling mounted steel storage racks made by a company called Safe Racks. I have installed these racks in my garage previously, so I was already familiar with how quick and easy they were to install, but also how handy they are at getting those larger items that I need to store off of the ground, away from the lower valuable wall space, and up higher to where they're still accessible when I need them. I started off by placing the ceiling brackets into my joists. Since I have rows of screws attaching my ceiling material to the joist, these were very easy to locate. After getting the mounting brackets attached, I went back down to my workbench and started assembling the arms. And this is where you can adjust the height of the entire unit. To determine the height of mine off of the ceiling, I measured the totes that I would be storing and a few other items and decided that three feet would be more than enough. After getting all four set to the same length, I hopped back up on the scaffolding, very quickly attached them, and then started putting in the cross members that will make up the body of the shelf. These safe racks do come in a variety of different sizes. However, I went with the four foot by eight foot rack and erring on the side of caution once again of leaving myself some extra room for future inventory, I went with two of them. I'm not sure what the weight capacity is for the smaller racks, but I do know that the four by eight weight rating is at 600 pounds. So that's quite a bit of stuff that these things can store. After getting the first one attached, I've repeated the process by installing the second one. And now I can start loading it down with totes. If you're gonna be storing boxes or totes, I recommend not only labeling the front, of course, but also the bottom. And this way you can walk underneath the racks, look up and see what's inside the second row without having to hop up on a ladder and move that front row. So I actually built another storage solution for the shop and that is this finishing rack, which holds all of my paint, my stain, tubes of caulking, and glue bottles. This was a few weeks ago when Triton Tools and Matt Cremona came to visit and Triton actually captured the project while Matt and I built it and produced a full video with lots of fun behind the scenes included. If you'd like to check out the video, then check the description down below for a link. And I think that's it for storage solutions. But before letting you go, I just wanna say a big thank you to this video sponsor, which is Skillshare. If you aren't familiar with Skillshare, it's an amazing online learning resource with over 21,000 classes. There's almost no topic that isn't covered on there, going from videography, productivity, to design, and so much more. Premium memberships start off at just $10 a month, but for the first 500 people to click the link down in the description, you'll get your first two months for free. I personally have been checking out classes related to selling items online, such as this class covering how to set up an Etsy store and just e-commerce strategies in general. If you're trying to sell items you make in your shop, then I definitely recommend checking it out. Another course I really liked is this class on logo design. Of course, if you're trying to start an online business, a logo is a great starting point. It's a good world to live by. You should just always be learning. Don't forget that the first 500 people to click the link down in the description will get two months for free. That's it for this one. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that you go out and clean that shop and I'll see you next time. Come here.